Caribbean Newsline is brought to you by the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. A special unit under consideration to investigate allegations of wrongdoing against public figures in the Bahamas. That's our top story in Caribbean Newsline for Wednesday, June 21. From the CMC News Center in Bridgetown, I'm Nicole Best. Good evening. The Bahamas' National Security Minister Marvin Deems says an increasing number of people in public office are being accused of wrongdoing. And he says government is giving serious thought to establishing a special unit within the police force, a corruption investigation unit, to look into those allegations. And ahead of that being done, Deems says some investigations have already begun. And the National Security Minister says government will not protect anyone from the full weight of the law. People have a right to know. Um, we have indicated as a government, uh, while we were on the campaign trail, that you know we will not sweep anything under the rug. Uh, no one is above the law, uh, and we continue to hold true to that. And so wherever we find that, uh, that individuals are culpable, uh, then the law would take its cost. But we want, to, we want to ensure that as uh, the police investigate, that we're being fair. Still in the Bahamas, the opposition Progressive Liberal Party, the PLP, has confirmed that former National Security Minister Dr. Bernard Nottage is gravely ill and has been hospitalized. A statement from the party sought to dispel social media rumors that Nottage had died, but said he is in the intensive care unit. No further information has been released. The health of the 71-year-old Nottage, who lost his seat in the May 10 general elections, became of public concern at a rally in late April when his speech became slurred. He was taken to the hospital after the rally and was said to be suffering from dehydration. His family issued a statement on Wednesday thanking people for their prayers and support and asking that their privacy be respected at this time. The main opposition St. Lucia Labour Party, the SLP, is defending its decision to walk out of Parliament on Tuesday. The SLP staged the walkout in protest of what it said was the spiteful and vindictive behaviour of Prime Minister Alan Chastenay. Opposition leader Philip Baer told a news conference that the action was taken after the government moved to prevent opposition legislators from making contributions to the budget debate. It is convention and normal that after an opposition uh, member speaks, a member of the government responds. Again, we came willing and able to, to, and to speak to the issues of the budget. But the Prime Minister, in his normal, vindictive, and spiteful manner, because he has the power of rebuttal, refuses to allow four senior members of his government to speak. You must understand, Stevenson King was a former prime minister. He holds an important portfolio of infrastructure and ports. We wanted to hear from Mr. King what was the state of the Grosley Highway? What was the state of the Hiwanora Airport? The prime minister did not allow Stevenson King to speak. Pair told reporters it was the first time a budget debate was adjourned for 40 days and warned that such a situation has serious implications for the country. There could be no capital expenses, there could be no new initiatives because the budget had not been passed. The Prime Minister did not care. Having adjourned it for 40 days, and we can only say it was adjourned because of spitefulness and vindictiveness, and the Prime Minister wants to make the point that he is in charge. We have said 
to the government that we are not against St. Lucia. We have a responsibility to St. Lucia. 37,000 people voted for us. We want to defend these people. We like St. Lucia. We want St. Lucia to progress. We want St. Lucia to advance. But the government is callous. It holds the opposition in contempt. It's vindictive. It's spiteful. And it believes in victimization. But Prime Minister Chassanet dismissed allegations that he had broken convention, saying that when the opposition had been given the opportunity to speak, no one wanted to, so he closed the debate. He said that based on the House of Assembly's standing orders, there is no speaking order. Former Haitian rebel leader Guy Philippe has been jailed for nine years for accepting bribes to protect cocaine smugglers who used his country to ship drugs to the United States. The 49-year-old Philippe, who had been elected to the Haitian Senate before his arrest, was sentenced by a U.S. federal court on Wednesday. He will also be on probation for three years after serving his sentence. Philippe had pleaded guilty in late April to the charge under a plea agreement that saw him avoid going to trial in May on a more serious trafficking charge that could have sent him to prison for the rest of his life. According to a statement filed with his plea deal, Philippe admitted that he not only shared the bribes from narco traffickers with fellow officers in the Haitian National Police, but he also wired hundreds of thousands of dollars to the United States to buy a home in Broward County and support his family. Before striking his plea agreement, Philippe had insisted that as an elected Haitian senator, he could not be charged by U.S. authorities. He also claimed that his arrest amounted to kidnapping but the judge ruled in March that he was not protected by sovereign immunity because he had not been sworn in before his arrest. The Trinidad and Tobago government is facing criticism for its coordination efforts following the passing of Tropical Storm Brett. It has come from opposition leader Kamla Prasad Bisesa. But a member of the Keith Rowley administration was also upset after learning that no emergency shelters had been activated to assist families in the south of the country who may have needed refuge after the storm passed on Monday night. A pregnant woman and her five children were among those stranded when their home was surrounded by flood waters. CNC3's Cindy Ragubar Tikasing spoke with her and filed this report. Three, they only knew about the storm at 8 p.m. on Monday and as the rains battered their small home, she knew then they had nowhere to go if they made it through the night. Local government minister Kazim Hussein came to assist the family, but was angered to learn no emergency shelters were activated in that area. So I called the chairman of the Pinal Levy Corporation, Dr. Alan Sami. He said none of the shelters open because they was waiting on ODPM. And it's a good thing I asked. So they said that's how they're going to open it now, but... That is not acceptable, really. Behind me is the New Cut Channel, which leads into the Gordino River. Like many rivers in the country today, this one broke its banks, leaving many people stranded. Opposition leader Kamla Prasad Bisesa visited the flooded home of a woman with 19 children in her constituency. Overall, she said she was not happy about coordination efforts following Brett. I believe that the response could have been more coordinated. Um, that is why we had set up the National Operations Center. I see the present government is relying on the ODPM. And then questioned the government's overall responses to emergency situations. Is there has been no announcement from the government as to whether they'll be creating an emergency fund because that's what you need, emergency relief fund. And where is the Prime Minister in all of this? I haven't heard or seen him. Still to come in Caribbean news, Land Jamaica ranking in increasing revenue from gaming, but says it's been cheated out of a lot more. Stay with us this after this break. Beautiful Barbados and 4D Entertainment welcome you to the Flow Soca on the Hill. Hill. Sunday, Sunday, July, July 23rd, 2017, 2017 where the mega stars of Crop Over 2017 assemble with the Caribbean's best. Patrice, Skinny Fabulous, Ricky T, Orlando Octave, and Ultimate Rejects to bring you the world's greatest soca party. The Flow Soca on the Hill. Let's gather the people. 
The Sajik Okayfield School of Business and Management invites you to attend Navigating a Path to Growth, a Risk and Competitive Intelligence Conference at Hilton Barbados Resort on June 26th and 27th, 2017. Speakers include Global Strategy and Risk Expert Dr. Andrea Schotter, Regional PwC Risk Assurance Leader Bruce Scott, Miss Lisa Padmore, Dr. Delisle Worrell, Mr. Ian D'Souza, Professor Patrick Hossein, Professor Gillian Marcel, and many others. For more information, call 246-424-7731 or visit www.uwichsb.org. Secure your space today. Welcome back. Jamaica has recorded a 21% increase in revenue from gaming in the 2016-2017 fiscal period. But Minister of Finance Audley Shaw, speaking at a Caribbean gaming show and summit in Montego Bay, says illegal gaming is depriving the country's coffers of up to 2 billion Jamaica dollars. Lorraine Mendez of the Jamaica Information Service has that story. Minister Shaw said $111.25 billion was received compared to $91.9 billion for the 2015-16 fiscal year. The lottery segment posted $36.8 billion in 2016-17, while revenue from betting was recorded at $10 billion for the same period. As the industry grows, the finance minister said intense measures were being applied to clamp down on illegal gaming and non-compliance. As the oversight body, the BGLC has forged MOUs with law enforcement authorities to have financial intelligence shared in real time. This is a major step in the fight against illicit gaming and we must have eyes and ears on the ground providing information on which the authorities can act speedily. Minister Shaw emphasized that illegal gambling operations rake in an estimated $2 billion per year, but robs the government and lawful operators of revenues. He revealed that 26 arrests were made in 2016-17 with $240,000 paid in fines by unauthorized individuals. I want to urge the local and regional stakeholders to be vigilant in your own operations and to work with the regulatory bodies to implement the mechanisms that will protect our industries. Meanwhile, Minister of Tourism Edmund Bartlett says government is looking to position Jamaica as a major player in the Caribbean gaming industry. He says that once all the regulations are in place, the gaming industry will be of fundamental importance to our tourism product. We now have an opportunity to seriously get in the game as an important part of this global phenomenon. There will also be the opportunity for operators of gaming establishments to be linked with industry suppliers of products and services. He said gaming had impacted positively on tourism in other countries and Jamaica should be no exception. It goes without saying then, that not only do we have to, in, to be introducing new games, we also have to be competitive. Our legislation will be seeking to advance our gaming to ensure that we are offering what is being offered around the world, and even better, so that we can attract more people, because tourism is indeed our main industry. And that was Jamaica's Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett ending that report. Still in Jamaica, the government is denying that a cholera case has been confirmed on the island. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Winston De La Haye has sought to dispel rumors circulating on social media that five people have turned up at a hospital with cholera-like symptoms and that the government is testing the public water supply. He said a sample has been sent for testing to the Trinidad-based Caribbean Public Health Agency from a patient whose identity has not been released with the bacteria Vibrio cholera in his blood. But Dr. De La Haye said, based on the patient's presentation, this bacterium is not consistent with the Vibrio cholera species associated with severe diarrhea, that, that's a diarrheal illness commonly known as cholera. We have a single isolated case of a patient who was admitted to hospital for nothing to do with any cholera-related illness. But as part of that patient's workup, uh, a blood sample supplied showed the presence of a Vibrio cholerae species of bacteria. There are a number of different species, and uh, based on the patient's presentation, the patient's history, meaning the patient has no diarrhea, no travel history, 
the contacts of the patient that we've investigated, we've had no contact with any symptoms suggested of cholera. We have sent a stool sample to CARFOR, which will provide us with a definitive testing. A statement from the Ministry of Health noted that the last known case of cholera in Jamaica occurred 150 years ago. A UNICEF study has found that more than 300,000 children are not attending school in Haiti. According to the 2011-2015 study, more than 320,000 children between the ages of 6 and 14 are not in school, and about 160,000 children aged 15 to 11 are not going to school. It is also found that almost 500,000 children aged 5 to 18 are compelled that they're completely excluded from the school system in Haiti and about one million children are at risk of leaving school without completing their studies. And ahead of Newsline Sport, the Windies head coach appeals to batsmen to play to their potential in the upcoming one-day series against India. Stay with us. Sport is next. Have you or someone you know been diagnosed with diabetes? If so, it is important that you know about Glucerna. Glucerna is a nutritional supplement for people with diabetes and contains carb steady, which helps minimize blood sugar spikes. Manage your diabetes with Glucerna. Glucerna, nutrition for people with diabetes, designed for you. Follow your heart to the 21st edition of the St. Kitts Music Festival from the 22nd to the 24th of June, featuring Shabarat, Ultimate Rejects, The Boozman, Mopado, Jack Pure, DJ Private Ryan, and back together again, Square One. Also performing, Third World. Voice, King Mighty Chalk Dust, Credence Clearwater Revisited, Ed Robinson, Ricardo Drew, Tedison John, Felicia Ross, Brianna D, Lyrical, and Google Dogs. For more information, log on to www.sentpitsmusicfestivals.net. Celebrating 40 years of fun in the June July Sun, Vinci Mass 2017. Enjoy the exciting blend of mass and pan of steel and glitter. There's a Monday street party like no other. And the explosion of colors at Mardi Gras. Don't be left out of the Vinci Mass 40th birthday celebration. Evo 4.0. Evo 4.0. There's Kaizo and the energy at Soka Mona. June 30th to July 11th. Vinci Mass, the hottest carnival in the Caribbean. Check out Vinci Mass on Facebook or carnivalsvg.com for more details. Vinci Mass. Well, head coach Stuart Law says West Indies batting in the upcoming five-match one-day series against India will be critical to the series outcome and has urged his batsmen to show more enterprise and play to their potential. The Wendy's batting struggled badly in the recent series against Minos Afghanistan and now faces a huge test against the powerful Indians who are already heavy favorites to win. That's the June 23 to July 6 series. They, they have to you know, start producing, um, so that there's no secret to that. Our bowlers have been been doing a great job um, you know, consistently, so now it's time for the batsmen to stick their head up and, and want to be out there, want to score runs. Uh, you know, against a, a pretty formidable uh, opponent in India, um, one of the best teams in the world, if not the best. So, great challenge for our boys, and I, I'm sure they're all looking forward to it. West Indies are coming off a disappointing 1-1 draw in the three-match series against Afghanistan in which they lost the first match by 63 runs and won the second by four wickets before the game-decisive third game was rained out without a ball bowl. The hosts struggled in the two games they played, failing to chase down that's 213 in the opener and then laboring to overhaul a modest 136 in the second, only reaching their target in the 40th over. Not a single batsman managed a half century in the two matches. Law said the issue was not one of skill, but the mental approach. To be honest, I think it's just a matter of just believing in their own ability a little bit more, have that self-belief, um, go out and remain positive. Uh, sometimes it looks like we're caught in two minds. Uh, once you're in two minds, it 
becomes very clouded in there and you, you can't execute your skills. So I'm, I'm just, you know, talking to them all the time, just saying just, just back yourself, be yourself, you know, be positive and, you know, the, the runs will come. Last year's Caribbean Premier League finalist Guyana Amazon Warriors are setting their sights on another title shot this year. They will open their campaign against St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots on August 5 in Fort Lauderdale. Head coach Royston Crandon says this unity was the reason behind the side losing last year's final, but he says they are ready this time around. We didn't make it uh, win the championship, but you know, that's how it goes sometimes. Um, you know, different challenges here again. You have to go out and play good cricket and be even better than last, last season. So I think um, we have a very competitive squad together. Um, you know, we have, I think, one week to, to put training camp, you know, to work out and get our strategies and set together how we're going to apply into the competition. So I think um, it's going to be a tough challenge for us. Um, you know, I think one of the strengths last year for us was um, team unity. We had a good unity in the team. And as long as we have good unity and we execute well in, in matches, we're going to win. So. As I said, it's going to be tough, but we are willing to fight hard. And Shimron Hetmeyer, who makes his debut for the Warriors, is aiming to lead the side all the way to the final. Well, now after a, a couple of seasons, I would say, now I'm really fight, finding my feet and getting some runs on the board and everything. So I'm just looking for to get that over into the CPL as much as possible and to see how how far in. How far I could take take the team if to, if not to the finals to win the finals. Meanwhile, Barbados Trident's operations manager Kirk Graves feels current champions Jamaica Talawas will not repeat last year's feat since the side will be without key players. He explained why the Trident's may be the team to beat in the tournament. Graves was speaking on WP Global Sports in Florida. But the Talawas in this type of league, you cannot count out anyone, but they have been severely weakened by losing Chris Gale and then Dre Russ. They've picked up Lendl Simmons, which is a good addition, but again, um, I think the Barbados Trident will win this year. Being unbiased, on paper, we have the best team, in my opinion, on paper. Um, all of our guys are playing at a very high level. The majority of our internationals right now are playing Champions Trophy in, in London. Um, some are playing all three versions of the game. Some are playing just the T20. So I think, again, we have the best team on paper right now is just to go and just execute on game day. Barbados Tridents will kick off their campaign on August 5 against defending champions Jamaica Talawas. But Graves says Trident's biggest threat won't be the Talawas. It will be the St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots. Of course, St. Kitts. I mean, St. Kitts has Chris Gale. I mean, Chris Gale alone by himself can demolish you. Chris, um, St. Kitts has a very good team. But again, at this level, you can't count anyone out. St. Kitts has a very good team, so does Trinidad, so does St. Lucia. They're building upon their program. So again, I mean, again, Jamaica as well. So, But one team will definitely be St. Kitts Patriots. Over to athletics, a dispute is brewing between the Jamaican quarter-miler Dominique Blake and the island's governing body for athletics. Blake, who was set to return to the track almost four years after she was sanctioned for using banned substances in the London Olympic trials, is now being told that she can't participate in a national meet unless she returns an Olympic medal. But her attorney contends that she cannot be forced out of the national trials. TVJ's Keon Raynar tells us more. A June 12 correspondence between Dominic Blake and the local governing body, the J3As, which TVJ Sports have received, indicates that the quarter miler must return the Olympic mile relay bronze medal she received from the London 2012 Olympics in order to be allowed to run at the national trials. And president of the J3As, Dr. Warren Blake, says there will be no compromise. We have taken that position and the reason is simple. In 2012, when Dominic Blake was named as part of the relay pool to London, she was not chosen to run. So therefore, she did not compete or, or participate. If she had participated in the event, the entire team would have forfeited the medals because of her subsequent being, subsequently to the event being convicted of a doping offence. But Dominic Blake, in her June 30 in response to the J3As, pointed to a letter from JADCO dated January 24, 2017, signed by Executive Director Kerry Brown, noting that no preconditions existed to prevent her return to competition. Blake said she has since competed eight times since February without any notification that the return of her Olympic bronze medal was conditioned precedent to competition. However, Dr. Blake was dismissive of Jadko's letter. 
Yeah, but the return to competition is not JADCO's call. JADCO does not govern whether an athlete can return to competition or not. They can only clear them for doping offense. Our sports team sought some clarity from President of the Jamaica Olympic Association, Mike Fennell, on the matter of the medal in question. Medals are given to those who actually participate in the heats and in the finals. Dominique Blake did not participate, but an error was made and she was given the medal. She was requested to return this medal from that time, and it was reported to us that she had refused to return the medal. So it's quite clear that she's in possession of a medal to which she was not entitled, and she should return that medal. The J3A's boss, Dr. Warren Blake, is maintaining they are on solid ground to bar Dominique from competing. The rules applicable at the time that she was barred from competition clearly states that as a precondition to return to competition that you have to return all the medals and prize monies that you have earned. And that is the rule that we are, we are, we are applying here. Dominic Blake's representative, Dr. Emir Crown, who has vast experience in sports law and who sought and obtained an 18-month reduction from her six-year sanction at CAS for a doping violation, has written to the J3As asking that they reconsider the request for the return of the medal in question. We are strongly of the view that any attempt by the JAAA to enforce something that the JOA is stating or mandating, then they're outside the jurisdiction. If the JOA has some issue with Ms. Blake retaining a medal or possessing a medal, then that is a separate matter entirely. And the JOA is free to take that up in whatever is the most appropriate avenue. But to essentially block an athlete like Ms. Blake from competing on her home soil through the JAAA, that we suggest is completely inappropriate. And that's the sport. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Caribbean Newsline is brought to you by the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. Ravenel's Resort and Conference Center is the mecca of conferences in the island of Tobago. The state-of-the-art facility caters to executive forums, weddings, banquets, training, elegant dining, and tranquil accommodations. Guests at Ravenel's Resort can choose from self-catering, standard, deluxe, and executive rooms. Sit at the poolside and savor the ambience of nature or enjoy a sumptuous meal on the terrace and inside a Bouvardia restaurant. Let's go to Ravenel's Resort and Conference Center, the tranquil Caribbean Resort. Call 868-6. 39966 or visit our website at www resort In a place where legends start, the beach is just the beginning. So live a little for the exhilaration and the color of every moment where time is and life is a spirited event. Immerse yourself in the culture, the music, the people, the island. Love Antigua and Barbuda. Embrace an experience that leaves you breathless. From cricket to sailing week to carnival and more. Antigua and Barbuda, the beach is just the beginning. Again, the major developments of this day, a special unit under consideration to investigate allegations of wrongdoing against public figures in the Bahamas. That's Caribbean Newsline. For news and sport around the clock, log on to carnanews.com. We'll be back here again tomorrow, but from all of us at CMC News, have yourselves a good night.